Hey, this is Jerry from Blizz Studio, and in this Unity tutorial, we're going to look at the train tools that are built into Unity, and then also the train tool asset that you can download as a package. So if you're ready to start building 3D terrains, let's go. Okay, so here I am in Unity, and this tutorial is a little bit of a long one, so I hope that you stick with me. Now, what are we gonna cover? We are covering creating terrain. All right, so to get started, I've already imported a character that I downloaded from Mixamo into my game. The next thing I need to do is to go ahead and go over to so assetstore.unity.com and I've downloaded three different asset packs. The first one is the low poly environment nature pack. And the one thing that you need to note with a lot of the asset packs, I am starting a URP project and you just need to make sure that the asset packs that you download will work with URP. A lot of them will have a component that you install after you download this that will then upgrade the materials to URP. So I'm using the low poly environment nature pack, which is free. I'm also using the fantasy skybox, which is free as well. And then we are going to, in Unity, download Unity's new terrain tools asset pack from the package manager. And then with that, it has a set of downloads that you can extend the built-in terrain tools set with this sample pack as well. So this is terrain sample pack asset, and we'll go over to Unity. So let's, in Unity, let's take a look at the package manager. The option that you need to download is terrain tools. Now there is already built in terrain tools in Unity. This just extends and adds a lot more features to it. So go ahead and download that. And then here is the link for the download asset pack, which is this terrain sample asset pack. It'll be good for you to have for this particular tutorial. All right. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and close this. I've already installed all of that. So let's jump right into the terrain. So for me to go ahead and start a terrain, I am going to go ahead to 3D object and hit terrain. This creates a terrain that's fairly large. Now my character looks big is because the character is way up in the sky and my terrain is way down low. So for us to go ahead and set this up, we wanna make sure we have our terrain selected. And then in the terrain component window, you can see that we've got a bunch of different buttons across the top. So with our paint train tab selected, we can go and go to set height. And then down at the bottom, we're gonna change this to be 100. And then we're gonna flatten tile. So what that's gonna do is bring the level of our terrain up so that we can then both decrease and increase the height. Boom, all of a sudden our terrain is way higher. Now we need to go ahead and instead of set height, we're gonna go back to raise and lower terrain. This is where we can start to increase and decrease the terrain to make it look like mountains and hills and valleys. So I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom out so you can see the size of my character in relation to the terrain. We have all these brushes to then be able to use to paint hills and valleys onto our terrain. There's a couple keys that you want to use. They're the A, D, S, and Control key. If you hold the A key, you can decrease and increase the strength of the brush. If you hold the S key, that changes the size. So I'm just hitting the key and then moving my cursor left and right. And then the D key allows you to rotate your train brush. And then the Control key inverses it so that it's decreasing the size of the train versus increasing the size of the train. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint out a little bit of terrain real quick. We now have some features in our terrain. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my player and now it's below the train. So what I need to do is to just go ahead and move the character up. There we go. And I've also went ahead and I've attached the main camera to the player. And so that, that that way it gives us a place to see or how we can see the player within the environment. I'm going to go ahead and just rotate my player real quick. All right. So now we have this terrain with some features. We need to actually go ahead and start coloring it. The way we're going to do that is to paint texture. So with the terrain selected, I'm going to go back to my paint terrain tab. I'm going to select paint texture. And then down at the bottom, we can go ahead and start adding layers to actually paint onto our terrain. 
So I'm gonna first add a layer. I have some of the predefined textures that we can add. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this grass A texture. And then boom, now our terrain has some texture to it. Now I think the grass is just a little bit small. So what I'm gonna do is to just select the name right next to the tile. I'm gonna select that and then I can change the size of the grass within this environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and just increase this to maybe 20 by 20. And I think that looks a little bit better. Now the next thing I wanna do is to go ahead and paint a path onto my terrain as well. So for me to be able to do that, I'm gonna go back to my terrain and I need to add another layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add layer and I'm gonna find something that looks like it would be path. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just use this sand terrain. And then what I can do is I can go and select maybe this smooth brush and let's go back to our scene view and I need to make it way smaller. And I wanna zoom in to where my player's at and then we can go ahead and start painting. So with my sand selected, I'm gonna go ahead and just start painting right a path onto my terrain. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just increase the strength here just a little bit. And you can start to see how there's just a little bit of a linear aspect of what this path looks like. And we want to make sure that this has a little bit higher resolution so we have a nice smooth transition. So to do that, what we're gonna do is go to Window, Terrain, Terrain Toolbox, and then right here, we've got the option of choosing a texture resolution, and we're gonna set the control texture resolution here a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go to 2048, apply to selected train. Now we can just close that window, and then our path will be a lot smoother. So let me go ahead and just paint out a path real quick, and then we'll be right back. So I have a little bit of a path painted out. I'm gonna go ahead and just continue by adding a new layer. And what I wanna do is just, I don't want the path to be right on the grass. And so what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of a transition in between the path and the grass. So I've got a couple different options of elements here. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose this grass soil terrain. And let's go ahead and choose that one. And then I can go ahead and paint this as well. Cool, so there we go. We now have a little bit of a path that our character can travel along. And of course, those mountains that are in the distance aren't gonna be covered in grass, they're gonna be covered in rock. So let's go ahead and add a new layer and let's just find a nice rock terrain. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and paint some of the mountains in the distance to have rock terrain. Okay, now that we have some rocky terrain, let's go ahead and add a little bit of snow. So let's add a new layer. And I've got a snow terrain option. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just take the brush size way down so we can be very selective about where we're painting this. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is currently my path is just flat along the terrain. And I want that path, because it is a path where people have traveled, I want it to be slightly indented. So what we're gonna do is go back to our terrain and we're gonna go ahead and raise and lower. And I wanna go ahead and indent that path. So I'm gonna take that strength way down as well. So I want the path to be slightly indented. So for me to do that, I just need to hold down the control key and then I can paint a dent into the path. The next thing I wanna do is to go ahead and paint on some grass. So for me to do that, I need to go to my grass tab and we can go ahead and edit details and I'm gonna add some grass texture. We can add meshes or we can add the texture. I'm gonna go ahead and add a texture. So let's go ahead and add detail and I'm gonna just choose my brush grass right here. And then I have some options for how big this is, a, both a min and a max, and then a height min and max. And you can always go back and edit these as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go to 0.2 and maybe 0.8. I'll do the same thing on the height. So it'll give us just a little bit of a variety. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that grass. And then I can now just start painting grass onto the terrain. So I've got the option of choosing the brush size, the opacity, which is how thick the grass is going to be, as well as the target strength. 
So boom, you can see how easy it is just to start painting grass all over your terrain. And if you do accidentally paint some grass onto your path, you can easily go ahead and delete that as well. So I'm gonna just zoom into my path here. Take my brush size down and then I can just hold the control key and boom, now I'm just removing the grass. Now this grass doesn't really look all that great right now. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to my edit details and I'm gonna edit this grass. So what we can do is we can start playing around with the color as the grass is on the ground. So we can change what the healthy color looks like. So I'm gonna just change this to be a little bit more in terms with the regular grass. And there we go. I can also add more details. So I'm gonna go ahead and just edit details and add more grass texture. So let's find a different type of grass. And let's maybe go ahead and add some flowers this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and add flowers. Now the next thing we need is some trees in our terrain. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go to my paint trees tab. And then with that, we can go ahead and edit trees. And I'm gonna add a tree. So we're gonna select a tree to use. And even though these look pink, they actually do paint out as regular graphics. So I'm gonna choose a pine tree. Go ahead and select okay. And then I'm gonna add that. And then with this, again, I can choose the brush size and then how we're going to paint that tree. And I can choose some randomization of the tree height. So let's just start placing a few trees. Boom, so that's pretty, pretty dense. There's a lot of different settings that you can use here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just undo that real quick. And as opposed to painting all these trees in, we can go ahead and use this, this mass place trees option. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then with that, we're gonna place 10,000 trees across our whole terrain. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit place. And then boom, all of a sudden now we have trees across our whole terrain. Then you can go back and start filling in or removing as you see fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove, remove a few here. So again, hold down the control key and we can just deselect or depaint some of those trees. And then we can also just go back and add more trees as needed. Boom, there we go. So that's actually looking pretty good. Now, the next thing I need to do is to go ahead and maybe paint in some, some brush as well. So I'm gonna, some bushes. So I'm gonna edit trees, add a new tree, and then we also have some options here for different types of bushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add one of those. And in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint down a few of these. Cool, this is looking pretty good, but we can make it look just a little bit better. So the first thing I wanna do is to go over to my lighting tab. And if you don't have that, you can go to window, rendering, lighting. And we want to go ahead and use our free sky box that we downloaded. So for us to do that, let's go ahead and in the environment part of our lighting tab, we can go ahead and click on Skybox Material. And I now have all of the materials that are in my game. I'm gonna go ahead and just try out a couple of these different skyboxes to see what really looks good. Yeah, and that one looks actually pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Then the next thing we need to do is we can turn on fog. Still in my environment tab, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on fog. And then we can choose what the fog color is. By default, this fog color is gray, but we can change it to whatever color we want. And because I have a little bit of red in the sky, I'm gonna go ahead and just choose to have this as a little bit red. And then we can change the density, so how thick that fog is and how far away it is. So let's just maybe take that down to two. So we can see down just a little bit further into distance. So the next thing that we can do is to also add some post-processing. Because I, this started out as a URP project, post-processing is installed. So what I can do is to easily go to volume, create a new global volume, and I'm gonna just call this post-processing. And then with that, I'm gonna go ahead and in my inspector, I'm gonna add a new post-processing volume. And now I have that post-processing volume installed. Now I can just select the post-processing and then start adding overrides. So in this case, we can add post-processing override. We can add maybe just a touch of bloom. 
and increase the intensity slightly. And for us to be able to see that, we need to make sure that our main camera also has rendering and post-processing checked. By default, that is off. So let's go back to our post-processing volume. Boom, there we go. So let's go ahead and hit play to see how this actually looks. Yeah, I'm digging it. So there you go. There is the terrain tool and a little bit of the post-processing and the fog for our terrain. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and it's something you can use for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.